Hey everyone, I want to welcome you to this new Topaz Labs workflow video. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I edit this image of a meerkat that was taken by my colleague Hillary. And we're going to use obviously Adobe Lightroom Classic, but also the three image quality apps, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI. And to give you a little idea of why we're going to use these apps. So let's start with Denoise AI. You probably can see it already, but if we zoom in, you can really see just how much noise there is. And this is pretty common when photographing wildlife. Uh, you tend to have to bump up your ISO uh, to really freeze uh, the animal in action. Uh, in this case here, uh, you want to make sure that uh, the the face, the head, the snout is all sharp. Uh, and it's really nice because the rest of the body behind the head kind of falls out of focus. So it's really nice. It's a very visually pleasing photo. Then as for Sharpen AI, I just want to bring out a little bit more detail. And you'll see that after we send it to Denoise AI, uh, there's definitely a little bit of room to bring out some sharpness, especially in uh, the head again and the snout. Um, and then finally, we're going to crop in really tightly. Basically, I want the frame to be filled with the meerkat. I don't necessarily need all this empty negative space around the meerkat. It doesn't really do much for me. And so by doing that, we're going to lose a lot of resolution. And to get that resolution back, we'll use Gigapixel AI to upscale the photo. Now, if I open up the metadata for this photo, you can see that this is a raw file. It's a Canon raw file. So one of the things that I want to do is use the new raw model in Denoise AI. And it is a kind of a bit of a specialized workflow when you're using Lightroom. And I'll show you how I use it. So this should work the same on Mac or Windows. What I'm going to do is right click and then I'm going to select show in Finder. On Windows, it might say show in Explorer, but it's the same basic thing. What that's going to do is it's going to open up, in this case here, the finder, and the image that we're working on is automatically highlighted. And then what I'm going to do is take this photo and drag it on to the denoise icon over here. All right, so here you can see that we have the low light model selected. And this is a great opportunity for me to illustrate just how much more beneficial it is if you have a, a very noisy photo that you have the raw file to um, using the raw model, how much more beneficial it is. So uh, let's kind of zoom in a little bit. We'll go to hundred percent and we'll kind of, we'll go over here. And so you can see kind of how speckled the background is, even though a lot of that noise is removed. Now check out what happens when we use the raw model. You see how much cleaner that is. That's, that's the benefit because the raw model is actually using the actual raw image data, the actual raw sensor data to apply the noise reduction as opposed to using uh, the processed RGB information. So it's a lot more effective. Again, if you have a noisy photo that is in a supported raw format, you really would be benefiting yourself by opening that raw file up first before you make any edits uh, in Denoise AI. And so you can see here, if we bring it, uh, position the, uh, preview area on the meerkat and click and hold, you can see just how much of an improvement that is. All of that uh, luminance and color noise is gone. Now, as far as the settings, you might notice that I've got remove noise set to 100% and enhance sharpness to zero. And that's very intentional. We could click on the auto switch over here, which will automatically analyze the image and select uh, the most appropriate or the best settings that Denoise AI thinks works for the image. But here's the thing. I know I'm going to be sending this photo to Sharpen AI afterwards, so I don't need any sharpening enhancement, which is why I bring that slider to zero. And also, you can still see that there is a little bit of noise at this 56 mark um, over here on the slider. So that's why I want to bring it all the way to 100. And I don't really have a need to recover the original detail. This slider will start to bring back some of the original photo. Um, I don't have a need for that here. And the raw model itself did an excellent job of removing any color noise. So I don't need to use the color noise reduction slider either. And there's one more thing that I want to note before leaving Denoise AI. If I would be working on a JPEG file, for example, basically something that's not a raw file. The first thing I would do uh, would be 
to change the view to the comparison view because in a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG file format, I would be using one of these four models. And so the, um, the comparison view is an excellent way for me to see all four models at once. However, again, because I'm working with a raw file, I know that I'm going to work with the raw model. So there was no need for me to compare. Uh, again, I know that the raw model is what I want to use. And, and if we click and hold, you can see why. It just does such a, a fantastic job in getting rid of all that noise while preserving a lot of that detail. So now that I'm done, I'm going to click on the Save Image button over here. And this is very important when you're using the raw model with your raw file. The first thing you'll want to make sure of is that for the image format, you have DNG selected. That's really important because that will preserve uh, all these changes in a raw-like file format. And then the other thing, especially if you're working uh, in a Lightroom workflow, you'll want for the save directory, you'll want the source option selected and I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. and close out of Denoise AI. Now you'll see in the same folder that the original raw file is located, you now have a new DNG file. And that's important. I'll show you why. Let's go back to Lightroom over here and I'm gonna open up the folder panel on the left side of Lightroom Classic. And here, this is the folder that contains that image that we just created, that DNG file. We need to get that into Lightroom because if we go to the grid view here, you'll see that we don't have it. We just have the original raw. And so what you'll want to do is right click on that uh, folder and then select synchronize folder. And this basically tells Lightroom to look at the folder and see if there are any new files that weren't there before. And so you can see that, oh yeah, Lightroom sees a new one, which is that DNG file. So we'll click synchronize. And there is the DNG file. And if we go back to the folder, you can see here is the original and here is the DNG. So let's go ahead really quickly and compare the two. Um, so here, this is the original on the left. This is the denoise version on the right. And here I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see it a little bit more of it, but just how much cleaner it is. It's, it, I mean, it, it's no contest. It's really, really impressive. Uh, and so let's go back to the grid view here. And I want to talk uh, just for a minute about why I didn't make any edits uh, to this photo, the original raw file. And that's because um, here with this raw file, if I send this over to Denoise AI, the, the actual raw file, Denoise AI will not look at any of the changes made. Like if I crop it, if I adjust the, the uh, tone or the color, Denoise AI only looks at the original raw file because even with Lightroom, you're never actually writing changes to the raw file itself. You're always writing the changes to what's called a sidecar file. And so because Denoise AI only looks at the raw file, it won't see those edits that you've made, which is why I didn't bother making any edits to the photo. However, now that I have the DNG file uh, that has a noise reduction applied to it, I can go ahead and make some basic changes. And so I'll go to the develop module here and we're not going to do too much. I'm going to go to my white balance dropper. I'll click over here kind of on this gray area just to make sure that I have a correct white balance. Also looking at the histogram, it looks like I have a little bit of room to move the white point. So I'm going to bring that over just a little bit, uh, drop the highlights and um, add just a tiny bit of contrast. Now, like I said, I'm not going to do anything else in terms of uh, sharpening, like using the clarity or the texture sliders or the sharpening slider, um, because we're going to be sending it over to uh, Sharpen AI. So in this case here, I'm actually going to take the sharpening slider amount and bring it to zero because I don't want any sharpening applied by default. The other thing that I want to do now is go to uh, the crop tool. So I'm going to go and click on the crop tool over here. And like I said, I don't like all that negative space. I'm going to make sure that my aspect ratio is locked and I'm going to go ahead and drop this box here, my little crop box uh, to see if I can really fill the frame with the meerkat. Let's also go ahead and rotate it just a tiny bit and let's see. So that looks actually really good. Um, I might bring it over just a tiny bit there and bring it up. Okay, cool. Actually, no, 
let's bring it down just a little bit there. I don't mind that we're cutting off the tail because the tail is so far out of focus. I don't think anyone really will notice. Um, really, I just want to fill the frame with the meerkat's head and its body. And so now I'm going to go ahead and send this DNG file that has been sent to Denoise AI. I want to send it to Sharpen AI. And to do that, I'm going to right click, go to edit in and select Topaz Sharpen AI. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to work in the JPEG file format uh, with Profoto RGB as the color space, the 8-bit uh, per component bit depth, and a resolution of 72 PPI. Then I'll click on edit to send it over. And now that we're in Sharpen AI, the first thing that I want to do is compare some of these models. And the best way to do that is to switch over to the comparison view. Let's go ahead and move the focus box over the meerkat's head. And in terms of the models that I want to work on, there is no motion blur because uh, really the, the meerkat was pretty still. So the two models that I, I kind of want to pay attention to are the out of focus set and the two soft set. And so over here, We'll start with two soft normal, which is fine. On this top right quadrant, I'll select the, the two soft, very blurry, because it's not noisy, so I don't have to worry about the very noisy model. Then on the bottom, I'll select out of focus normal. And on the bottom right, I will select out of focus, very blurry. And so just kind of looking at all four of these, I kind of like the out of focus, very blurry the most. So I'm going to double click on it. And that's going to bring me back into the single view. And just to compare, let's go ahead and click on out of focus normal just to get a full screen view. And let's also look at too soft normal. And you know what? Just comparing those, I actually prefer too soft normal. Now, again, with the model parameters, we're not doing any noise reduction. So I'm going to bring the suppressed noise slider to zero. We don't need that. And I'll take the remove blur slider and I'll increase that to about 10. Now, we have a pretty new feature in Sharpen AI that I absolutely love, and it's this select section over here. And basically what this will do is it will analyze the image and attempt to automatically select either a subject, a portrait, or a landscape so that the sharpening is applied only to that area. So to enable that, just click on the switch, and you can see here kind of a rough estimate of the mask that was automatically created. If you wanna see it in greater detail, or to refine it, just click on this refine button. Now you can see I have this always show overlay switch on and it just makes it easier to see uh, where the mask is. And for an auto selection, this is outstanding. Now I don't really need this area to be masked. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select the subtract brush, make sure that my opacity is at 100%. Let's increase that brush size and I'm going to remove this little section of the mask here. And so basically what we're doing is we're restricting the sharpening just to this area of the image. We don't need to sharpen the background. We don't want to sharpen the background because that background is very soft. We uh, applied noise reduction to it. So why would we want to apply sharpening? So again, the, the auto subject selection is, is really powerful. And I think you're really going to like it as you use it with your photos. And so now that we've updated the mask, we can click on the update button that will apply the new mask. And again, we've only applied sharpening to the, this masked area. And if you click and hold, you can see the original image and then the sharpened image. We can also go ahead and zoom in a little bit more and just click and see. It's very subtle, but that's the point. You don't want to over sharpen an image. That's a, a really easy way to ruin an image is to over sharpen it. So here, all we're doing is we're just kind of snapping detail around the edges of the meerkat. And now that we're done with sharpen AI, let's click on apply to return back to Lightroom. All right, so here we go. This is our original raw file. This is the denoise AI version. Uh, also, we cropped it. And then this is the sharpen AI version. So if we compare these two images here, uh, you'll see that uh, we still have really great noise reduction, but we have just a little bit more sharpness applied to the meerkat, which is important. The other thing that I want to point out is you'll notice here that the original raw file is just under 45 megapixels. And if we open up the info panel here, you'll see that on this photo, um, again, it's, it's uh, 44.8 megapixels, but it's cropped down uh, to be 
11 and a half megapixels. So again, 11 and a half megapixels is typically fine. It depends on what you want to do. So let's pretend that I want to print this uh, on a really large uh, factor, like a big poster print. In that case, uh, 11 and a half megapixels might not be very good. That's about the same resolution of uh, most mobile phones uh, and some mirrorless cameras. Whereas having almost 45 megapixels, that's great. So this is an opportunity for us to use Gigapixel AI to upscale the photo, which is really important. And so to do that, I'm gonna right click just like before, go to edit in and select Gigapixel AI. And again, I'm just gonna stick with JPEG, uh, Profoto RGB and the rest will just keep the same. And when we're ready, click on edit to send it over to Gigapixel AI. In Gigapixel AI, the first thing you'll really wanna do is specify what upscale factor you wanna use. So in this case, either a 2X or even a 4X upscale would be great. Let's go ahead and we'll change our zoom to fit here. And we'll also change our view to comparison view because there are several models that you can choose from. And so when we're comparing models of a photo, options like standard and low resolution are great as well as lines, but I don't tend to use the art and CG model very much. So I'm, I'm gonna select it and then click on very compressed. And so just looking at these four models, I think that standard works the best. So I'm gonna click on it and then double click on it to open it back up into single view. Now, looking at the setting sliders, again, we don't need to suppress any noise because we've already run the image through Denoise AI. And as far as remove blur, which also kind of sharpens the image, we don't need too much of that because we sent it to sharpen AI already. Under additional settings, there is no color bleed here, so I'm gonna disable that. And there are no human faces, which is why I have the face refinement switch turned off. Now that we're done, I can click on apply to return back to Lightroom. And now you can see, again, we started with a 44.8 megapixel image which we ran through Denoise AI and cropped, that resulted in a 11 and a half megapixel image. But then after we upscaled it in Gigapixel AI, we now have a whopping 183.6 megapixel photo. And if we compare the two just to see what that means. So I'm gonna zoom in here and that just shows you just how much more resolution you have uh, from when you upscale using Gigapixel AI. There's just that much more image data, which will help in a big way when you're going to print or if you need that extra resolution. And again, just comparing the two, they're basically identical, which is really important because oftentimes when you use certain upscaling methods, you end up losing a lot of that important edge detail, but we've preserved all of that here, which is great. So I hope you found this workflow video helpful and that it gave you ideas of how to most effectively use our three image quality apps with Lightroom or your own host editing application. Be sure to head over to topazlabs.com to learn more and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.